Hey guys, Francis here. In this video, we are going to learn about what capillary electrophoresis is and how does it work. The instrumentation of capillary electrophoresis is pretty simple. First, we have a few silica capillary that extend between two buffer reservoirs. Inside these buffer reservoirs, there's a platinum electrode which is connected to a high voltage power supply. Our sample can be introduced at one end of the capillary while the detector is placed near the other end. The sample valve is interchangeable with the buffer reservoir during the introduction of sample. In order to understand how capillary electrophoresis work, we need to take a look at two key mechanisms. The first mechanism is the electroosmotic flow which governs the movement or the direction of the bulk solution in the capillary. The second mechanism is the electrophoretic mobility, which is responsible for the separations of charged species in the solution. First of all, let's take a look at the electroosmotic flow. By definition, electroosmotic flow is the movement of the separation buffer through the silica capillary as a result of the assistance of a zeta potential at the solvent silica interface. One of the keywords we see here is a solvent silica interface. So to understand what exactly is electroosmotic flow, we need to take a look at what is going on at the solvent silica interface. This diagram here shows the cross-section of a few silica capillary. Typically, the capillary we use in CE has an inner diameter of around 10 to 100 micrometers with length of about 40 to 100 cm. It is usually coated with a thin layer of polyimide to protect the capillary. To give you some perspective of how small the capillary is, we can take a look at our own hair. A typical human hair has a diameter of about 100 micrometer. The inner diameter of CE capillary is even thinner than our hair. Remember the chlorophyll experiment that we have done in CM1191? We use column chromatography to separate beta carotene and chlorophylls from a plant extract. The silica gel that we use for column chromatography is polar because of the cyanol groups exposed on the silica surface. Similarly, on the surface of the few silica capillary we use in CE, there are silanol groups. And the chemistry of these silanol groups are pH dependent. When the pH is lower than 3, the silanol groups on the silica surface are fully protonated. When the pH is greater than 9, the silanol groups are almost completely deprotonated, making the silica surface negatively charged. In between pH 3 and pH 9, the cyanol groups are partially deprotonated. In this experiment, the buffer solution we will be using has a pH of 7.7, .7, which is pretty close to pH 9. Therefore, it is safe to assume that the cyanol groups on the silica surface are dominantly deprotonated. Because of the deprotonation of the cyanol groups on the silica surface, the capillary surface is basically negatively charged. The negatively charged surface will attract the positively charged cations from the buffer solution, forming a layer of tightly absorbed cations, which is called a fixed layer on the silica surface. However, the tightly absorbed cations can only partially neutralize the negative charge on the capillary surface. Therefore, the negatively charged surface can still attract more cations from the buffer solution. This forms a diffuse layer where the concentration of cations is higher than the concentration of anions. Together with the fixed layer, these two layers are called the electrical double layer. At the center of the capillary tube is the bulk solution where the concentration of the cations and anions are about the same. To complete the cross-section of a capillary, we have the diffuse layer and the fixed layer at the other end too. 
Let's take a closer look at what will happen when we apply a voltage across the capillary. On one end, we have the end node, which is positively charged. On the other end, we have the cathode, which is negatively charged. When the voltage is applied across the capillary, the cations in the diffuse layer will be attracted to the negatively charged cathode, dragging the bulk solutions along with them. This is what we call the electroosmotic flow. Now, let's take a slightly more 3D perspective of an electroosmotic flow. Imagine the capillary tube is fixed in position, and on top of the capillary wall, we have the fixed layer and the diffuse layer where the concentration of cations is higher than the concentration of anions. And then we have the bulk solutions in the middle. Imagine the diffuse layer is like a movable tube inside the capillary. When we apply a voltage across the capillary, the cations in the diffuse layer will be attracted towards the negatively charged cathode, dragging the bulk solutions along with them. That's why the electroosmotic flow is generally towards the cathode. Electroosmotic flow is a unique feature of capillary electrophoresis. Because the electroosmotic flow essentially originates near the capillary walls, it has a flat flow profile, which is very different from the parabolic flow profile we usually see in pressure-induced flow in the case of HPLC. Therefore, as compared to the pressure-induced flow, electroosmotic flow minimizes band broadening, which in turn improves the peak resolution and the separation efficiency. The unique flat profile of electroosmotic flow is the main reason for the higher separation resolution and efficiency in CE as compared to that of HPLC. In summary, we have learned about the electroosmotic flow in this video. Electroosmotic flows tells us about the movement and the direction of the bulk solutions in capillary electrophoresis. And also because of the unique flat flow profile, it usually results in better separation efficiency and resolution. But it doesn't tell us about the separation of analytes. So the next question we need to ask is, how do we separate anions, cations, and neutral species in capillary electrophoresis? We will be learning more about this in the next video when we talk about the electrophoretic mobility. So see you guys in the next video. Bye!